Hey everybody, Mike here. This video is going to be kicking off a little mini series here on my channel where we're going to be talking about camera basics. And in this video, we're going to be talking specifically about aperture. So the three camera basics, the topics that I'm going to be covering in this series are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Today, like I said, we're just going to be talking about aperture. So guys, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the future videos in which I cover shutter speed and ISO. So these three things, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO are prevalent on every camera. And if you're somebody that's interested in learning more about photography or videography, or you just have a camera and you want to learn how to use it, then this video series is going to be perfect for you. And even if you're somebody that's really experienced, if you're somebody that's a professional photographer, maybe it's just, you know, fun for you to brush up on some, uh, you know, old stuff that you may have forgotten or something like that. So either way, guys, I'm super excited to get into this today let's talk about aperture okay so what is aperture aperture is basically the hole that is inside of the lens and every lens has a hole inside of it otherwise no light would pass through and if no light could pass through then nothing would be projected onto the image sensor or the film now that hole is called the aperture now every lens is different some lenses have a larger hole some have a smaller hole some lenses allow you to change the size of that hole other lenses don't let you change the size of that hole at all so essentially the larger the hole on the lens the larger the amount of light that is allowed to pass through that lens makes sense right bigger hole more light smaller hole less light so like i said every lens has this and of course that covers every type of camera because a camera wouldn't work without a lens so i'm talking about disposable cameras I'm talking about cell phone cameras, DSLR or mirrorless cameras, cinema cameras, all of them, they all have lenses that have an aperture. Cause like I said, if they didn't have an aperture, you'd basically, you might as well just throw a brick on the front of your camera and be like, Hey, I hope some lights passing through here. Cause yep. Good luck. <laughs> so specifically inside the lens, that hole can also be referred to as the diaphragm and the diaphragm itself is usually made up of blades. Now these blades can vary in number depending on the lens. So some lenses have five blades, some lenses have nine blades. It just depends on how the manufacturer of that lens decided to make that lens, but essentially what it's doing when you change the size of the diaphragm, it, it is making the aperture larger or smaller, which in turn lets in either more or less light depending on the size of that hole. So lenses with the ability to change their aperture have what's called an adjustable diaphragm. The lens I'm holding right now is a little vintage lens that I got from an antique store a while back. And this lens, I'll show you guys a clip here, actually has a manually adjusted diaphragm and you can see that I, as I move the little ring on the outside, it actually changes the size of the uh, blades on the inside of the lens, which is letting in more or less light. So it's a nice little visual representation of sort of how the lens works and how you can change the diaphragm to suit your needs as a photographer or videographer, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Some lenses like lenses on your cell phone camera, they just have sort of a fixed aperture. You can't actually control the size of the aperture. You can't make it any larger, you can't make it any smaller. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna be talking about lenses that have the ability to change the size of the aperture through what's called an adjustable diaphragm. Okay, so math wizards, listen up. Okay, so how is aperture calculated? Because that's a really important thing when determining what kind of lens you want or when you go shopping for a lens and looking for a lens, you see all these numbers and what does that mean? I'm gonna explain that. So the F number, or essentially the aperture of a lens, is a very, very simple formula. So as you can see here, the formula is N equals F over D. Now in this equation, N equals the F number, and that is the value of the aperture of that given lens. F is the focal length, and D is the diameter of the entry hole of the lens. So aperture is also known as F-stop. So if you've ever heard that term, you know, what's the F-stop of this lens, they're basically just referring to the aperture. And that F-stop or aperture is written out like F slash two or f slash 3.5 and basically what that means is it's just an f stop of two or an f stop of 3.5 so as a quick example for you guys so you can understand this a little bit better if you have a 10 millimeter lens like that is the focal length of that lens it's 10 millimeters and you have an entrance diameter of five millimeters then you just plug those two numbers into the equation where they're supposed to go and you'll see that the F number is two. So you could say that that lens has an aperture diameter of F2, which if that lens has an adjustable diameter, basically just means that the lowest aperture or the most wide open that hole gets is F2. And you obviously can adjust those using the adjustable diameter, but effectively that is the classification of that lens is that it would be an F2 lens. So an important thing to remember when talking about aperture is that a lower number actually lets in more light. So if you have a lens that's like a f1.4 lens, that's gonna let in more light than say an f3.5 or an f4 lens, or something like that. So just remember that's kind of backwards. It's like smaller number, more light, bigger number, less light. Okay, so hopefully you guys are following so far, but what does that mean? How does that affect videography or photography? Okay, so the size of this hole 
is obviously changing the amount of light that is being entered into the lens and thus being projected onto the image sensor. But what does that do to photography? And what does that do to videography? So the diaphragm, which as you guys know, on most of these lenses can change, that actually, like I said, it controls the amount of light that enters the camera, but it also controls your depth of field. So the depth of field is essentially the area of sharpness, either near or far, within a given photograph or video. So as you guys can probably see, the background behind me is quite blurry. My face is in focus and the background is blurry. If you've ever wondered how a photographer or a videographer or something you saw in a movie or YouTubers even get that blurry background, it all has to do with aperture. And the way that you achieve this is by opening your lens up all the way. By making that hole as big as possible, that allows a lot more light to come in, yes, but it also makes your depth of field a lot more shallow. So in photography or videography, when people refer to a phrase called shooting wide open, that essentially just means that their lens is as wide open as possible. It is at the maximum aperture or the smallest f-stop number of that given lens, and not every lens is the same, but it is the maximum aperture and therefore their lens is wide open. So another thing about depth of field is essentially that you have a subject that is in focus and a background that is out of focus, or vice versa, you could have a background that's in focus and a subject that is out of focus, kind of like this. So see, the background is in focus and I'm out of focus. If I tell my camera to focus on me, now I'm in focus and the background is out of focus. So talking about depth of field and background blur, for example, the amount of that can be controlled by the aperture. So the larger the hole on a lens, the more background blur you're gonna get, and the smaller the hole, the less background blur you're gonna get. Essentially, the smaller the hole that you make, the more that is going to be perceived as in focus. Now there's other variables that go into this, such as distance to the camera, or focal length, things like that. Those types of things can also sort of affect background blur. But for the sake of this video and just keeping it within basics, we're gonna be just talking about aperture and how that affects depth of field, as well as something like just background blur or bokeh. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So here we have an image that was captured with a large f-stop number or a, uh, a small aperture. So basically the hole on the camera lens itself was quite small. And as you can see, there's a quite a bit of this image that's actually in focus. The subject here is uh, in focus as well, but a lot of the background is in, is in focus also. Then if we switch over to this other image that I took with a smaller aperture number, meaning that the hole, the actual diaphragm on that lens was open all the way, letting the most amount of light in, yes, but also we wanted to use that feature to control the amount of background blur and we wanted to isolate that subject. You can see the difference between these two images is that the depth of field has changed dramatically. So in the first image, a lot of that image was in focus. Not that much is blurred out. You can actually kind of see the details in a lot of things. The second image, which I shot with a much lower f-stop number and a larger aperture, the subject is in focus, the background is completely out of focus, and the images actually look quite a bit different as a result of this essentially creative technique within photography. And you can use this in videography as well. So honestly, that's one of the things I love most about being a photographer and a videographer. You actually get to make the creative choices and the decisions based on whatever you're doing, whatever your subject is, whatever you're trying to capture with your camera. Knowing what aperture is and how it applies to your images or your videos allows you to make those choices and those decisions. And one of the things I actually recommend to people when they're starting out is to go out and just take an image, any image, it doesn't matter. It could be take it of a garbage can, I don't care. But take that image with a lower f-stop number. Open your lens up all the way, as wide open as it can go. Take an image there and then Take your f-stop number, don't even move the camera at all. Just take your f-stop number and change it. Bump it up and make that hole smaller and take an image there and then go home and look at those and see what the difference is. And by experimenting that way, you'll actually kind of learn how those numbers and how the aperture and works and how your lens specifically works because every lens is different, guys. So what's really cool about that is that if you want to be a photographer that you're going to choose to have a shallow depth of field, open that lens all the way up and shoot that sucker wide open and make sure the background is completely blurred out if that's what you want to do. Or maybe you're shooting a gorgeous landscape and you honestly want as much of that landscape in your image or in your video in focus as possible so you make your f-stop number smaller, thus making the hole on your lens on that diaphragm smaller so that you can capture more that is perceived in focus in the plane of focus there and you know in that image or sometimes honestly i find myself running into this a lot you're actually forced in certain situations to use a smaller aperture maybe it's super dark outside and you're like yo i can't shoot this photo with a tiny hole on my camera 
on, on my lens, so I need to open that bad boy up to let as much light in as possible because it's kind of dark out. So sometimes the conditions that you're shooting in also dictate sort of how you have to shoot. We'll talk about more things that pertain to that in the later episodes of this mini series, both talking about shutter speed and ISO. But essentially, a lot of times for me, if I were to give you guys an example, if I'm shooting in a low light situation, I make sure that my lens, whatever lens I'm using, I make sure that that lens is always open as wide as possible to let in as much light as possible so that I don't have to rely as heavily sometimes on something like shutter speed or ISO to compensate for that, which again, we'll talk about in upcoming videos. And it's important to note as well, guys, that not all lenses are the same. So certain lenses have much wider apertures than others. Oftentimes, lenses that have apertures that are like 1.4, 1.2 tend to be very, very expensive. So as I mentioned earlier, lenses with lower f-stop numbers usually let in more light and offer a more shallow depth of field when shooting photos or videos wide open, which means that that's at the lowest possible aperture. So it's also important to know that some lenses have a variable aperture. I actually have one right here. So this lens was a kit lens that I got with my very first DSLR camera. And this lens is a, it's the 18 to 35 zoom lens from Canon. And this lens's classification has an f-stop of f3.5 to 5.6. So you can see on the lens right here, it says 3.5 to 5.6. So what those numbers mean, if you see a lens like that, it means that at the widest focal length of that lens, so again, this was an 18 to 55 millimeter lens, that's the focal length. At 18 millimeters, the, the widest aperture or the lowest f-stop number is going to be 3.5. And then if you zoom in, so if I go take this lens and I zoom all the way into 55 millimeters, then it means that the f-stop is the, lo the lowest f-stop number and the aperture is essentially 5.6. So that's the lowest value you're going to get on when you're zoomed in like that. And usually cheaper lenses, lenses that don't cost as much, especially zoom lenses, have this. They have a, a variable aperture. It's a lot cheaper for manufacturers to make. It doesn't cost as much money as creating a, a zoom lens that has a fixed aperture. A lot of that has to do with physics and properties of light and just crazy stuff that you don't even want to know about or hear about. Stuff I don't even I don't even know about. But it's not gonna but it doesn't belong in a basics video, all right? I'm getting ahead of myself here. But essentially, some lenses have a variable aperture. So guys, I hope this video was really helpful for you. I hope that you guys maybe learned something today about aperture or about photography, or maybe you just un finally uncovered the secret as to how your favorite YouTuber has a blurry background and now you know the secret and you can do it too. It's really not that complicated. It just comes down to lenses and knowing how to use them. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe as well, and make sure you guys click that bell icon also. Because guys, YouTube does a really poor job of making sure that everyone who's subscribed to a channel gets videos put into their sub box sometimes so if you're interested in seeing more of this content from me and you're interested in all the things I'm doing please be sure to subscribe hit that bell like I said you'll get a notification when you log into YouTube next time after I've uploaded a video and there'll be a little notification there that says I've uploaded a video that way you won't miss out on all the awesome content that I'm creating and guys next time we're gonna be talking about shutter speed so make sure you guys stay subscribed and check back on the channel often to see if I've uploaded that video just in case you've missed it but yeah that's gonna do it for me today hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one peace Thank you.